And tell me, how long have you and Shelly been married for? We were married for over 14 years. 14 years. You guys lived here in East Las Vegas and been going through the pandemic. Um, Sunday, an absolute tragedy. What has, what have the last 48 hours been like for you? Um, it's been pretty much uh, a complete shock, complete disbelief, um, something that I could not even imagine or dream up if I even took the hardest effort I possibly could. Um, because what happened was a flat out horrendous and unnecessary tragedy that was 100% avoidable. I'm sure that day Talk to me about it. Was she going out for her typical bike ride? Well, what did she typically like to do? Was that normal for her to go on a bike ride? It was, especially on her days off, um, which she always had Sunday off. And she would go out and want to ride from here out to the Wetlands Park Loop and go out there and ride the bike trail that was out there. And sometimes we would even go out and uh, ride all the way out to Lake Las Vegas. We made that ride to and from there a number of times. And um, I just didn't happen to go with her this prior ride. She was already predetermined that she was going to go. And so she decided to go and take off for her typical ride on the Wetlands Park Loop. And Hollywood Boulevard, normal route? Normal route, yeah. And you realized something was wrong, though, at about 10 in the morning when she didn't come back? Yeah, about 10 in the morning, which would have put her about three hours into the ride. And typically ends up she'll get back within two hours. But I know that there's a few people that are on that path that she used to work with um, at a prior hotel that she would stop and chat with. So I'm figuring that maybe the conversation drew out a little long. You know, they, they reached the park out there and sitting on the benches, things of that nature, and just kept giving it the you know, benefit of the doubt as far as time goes. And then started all of a sudden calling and text messaging um, in which every single one of those efforts went unanswered. For you, it was worrisome. Yes, very worrisome, because that would be uh, unlike her. You left the house. You went to Hollywood Boulevard. Was yes. That when you first noticed the scene. Yes, because I was on my way. I loaded my bike up um, in one of my vehicles, and I was headed out to Wetlands Park. I mean, I changed clothes, got into my cycling gear, with the full intent on going out to the um, Wetlands Park Loop, and I was going to go out there and ride that loop go looking for her. And, um, and as I'm leaving my house, what roughly about what, one and a half miles from here, I come across uh, some caution tape on Hollywood. And I'm thinking right off the bat, that's when kind of like the first slight gut punch hit me, thinking, okay, um, you know, with all the connecting of the dots of unanswered phone calls, unanswered messages, things of that nature, and then here we go, I've got caution tape on a portion of the route that I know for a fact that she would have taken. And, uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to jump the gun because I'm thinking, well, you know, they've got a pretty large, sizable area blocked off here. And that usually generates, you know, from large car accidents. And plus, I'm also thinking to myself, too, that at this particular area is blocked off. And here she is. She's been gone for four hours. And most accidents are usually cleaned up in a relatively short period of time, you know, not five or 10 minutes, but they would have been cleaned up relatively short. And I'm thinking, man, okay, she's been gone for four hours, which means that she's already two hours late. So the chances of that being her would be extremely slim because that means this would have already had to be going on for well over two hours. So that's why I didn't really, I didn't panic too much at that point. But then connecting the dots, when did you finally realize that this was Shelly involved? Well, I went around and I started getting some information um, from some of the officers over there. And uh, they were holding back on some of the information. I could feel that, uh, which understandably so. And the more I kept asking and kept trying to give them a description, I said, hey, I need to know if, if my wife is in there or do I need to continue on into the desert to try to find her? Um, I said, I just need a simple yes, no. That's all I'm looking for. And then as I'm looking back in there, I'm looking probably 150 yards to the north because I'm right now, I'm at the south end of the blockage of Hollywood. So I'm, look, I'm facing north at this point. 
and I see about 150 yards in, I see an object covered with a white sheet. And, you know, and that could be, you know, whomever, whatever, or whatever, you know, but, and it was also on the west side of Hollywood, okay? So that would have mean that the only way she would have been on the west side of Hollywood is if she was still going out. She was still going to the trail, okay? Because that means she would have been going with traffic. And then when the officers kept trying to, holding back information, but then when I ended up asking them, how long ago did all this take place? And they said, oh, 7.30 in the morning. Well, right then and there, that's when I even let them know. I said, well, I can guarantee you right now that's her. I said, because 20 minutes from my house puts me exactly where that sheet is at. So that's when I knew right there, without them even telling me, giving me any more information, which they, you know, which, which that took a while to get. So that's when I knew was at that point. I know it's only been 48 hours, but how has life just changed? Because this was so sudden. Yeah, it's changed in a way that, uh, that, you, wouldn't, that you wouldn't believe. You know, house isn't as full. Um, things are a little bit chaos, chaotic a little bit to where, you know, things that normally are getting done at certain points of time during the day, um, they get, you know, they're getting done differently or they're not getting done because maybe it's something that maybe Shelly would have done, like maybe feeding the cats at a certain time, things of that nature. And it's, you know, and you can tell they're acting a little bit different right now, you know, and then not to, not to mention the, the overwhelmingly abundance of uh, phone calls that I'm getting from family members and friends who are every single one of them have been nothing short of astounding. Um, you know, we're all trying to support one another and them more, you know, more importantly are sitting there trying to support me and I'm trying to let them know I'm supporting them because it's the loss of their sibling and, you know, their, their family member as well. So, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite a 48 hours. She was probably the nicest person you'll ever meet. Um, she was a ray of sunshine. When she walks into a room, you can just see and feel and hear the glow coming right off of her. Um, if you didn't know her, you would know her in a matter of minutes in a very good way, and you would not forget her. And um, that's, man, that, that's about it. I mean, she, she's always thinking about others, always. I mean, there, there's always stories about where I hear people all the time, yeah, Shelly's always, she went to the cupcake store and, and before you know it, here she is, she's knocking on my door and here she is, she's bringing me a box of cupcakes of one of every flavor to make sure I had some. And, and my mom is always saying, Shelly's always bringing me, making sure I had cookies whenever she went to her favorite cookie place. And, and my mom's not even asking her or nothing. And she just shows up with them and, and that's just who she was. I mean, that, that she is always looking out for somebody else always. Would you consider her your soulmate, your world? Yes. Yeah. How would you describe your relationship? Oh, it was, it was very solid. Very rock solid. A lot of common interests. Um, a lot of uh, common ground and common ideas and common thinking. Um, and, um, you know, both of us, you know, we had that we shared the nature of no bad habits, so that was easy. It's not like she had to deal with my bad habits or me dealing with her bad habits that could, you know, usually pay a toll on a marriage or something. And um, so, yeah, we liked the same things. We liked to travel to the same places and um, everything. We liked to do this. We just liked to adventure into these different places, and it was great. And yeah. Had fur babies as well. Yes. Yep. Two of them inside and one of them outside that was a uh, feral cat that we ended up saving after uh, she ended up getting trapped here. Um, and we had to turn her and her babies in and uh, the babies got adopted and Gracie um, did not get adopted. And there was only two options and we did not like their option, option one, which would have been for her to no longer be around. And so they said they would have to return her to us. And so we took her and I was finally able to uh, somewhat break her to where now she comes right up to us. She comes, came right up to me and Shelly every day. Some of my family members she recognizes but just is not as quick to come up to them. So yeah, so she's part of the family. What will you miss the most about Shelly? 
um, just the life that she brings, the life that she just brings into this world. That's, uh, that's what I'll just remember because she just brought life and goodness into everything. And um, yeah, that, that's one of the big things there because uh, my best friend, basically, he's, he's like eight or nine years older than me. So obviously he's lived a longer life than I have and I've known him for 35 years. He basically ended up telling me, he said, Lonnie, let me tell you something. And his name is Jerry. And uh, Jerry knows exactly who, who you are out there, who I'm speaking of. And he said, Lonnie, out of all the people that I know and all the people that I've ever known, this event that took place, Shelly is the absolute last person that this should have happened to. Period. That was the end of story right there. And that sums it up right there. Some may be watching this and thinking, wow, you're staying so strong. How are you doing that? No, I have my moments. Yeah, trust me. I have my moments. Um, it's, uh, you know, even though I am a strong-minded individual, um, I, I definitely have many, many moments. Um, I definitely have a great blessing of having very good uh, supportive support system, which is made up of family and great friends, two of which you're going to meet here momentarily. And uh, they have, they've been nothing short of phenomenal. So supporting you through this time. Yes, yes. Does it even feel real? No, it doesn't. What no. does it feel like to you? feels like maybe she's back east visiting her family back in Ohio. Maybe she's on vacation back there visiting her sister Cheryl, having a good time with her cousins back there, and, uh, and she'll just be home any day. But the reality is? Yeah, reality is she's never coming home. When you say that, do you even believe those words? I, not yet, I don't. It does. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, it does. Is there anything else that you would want to share about Shelly and just her legacy, the impact she's had here in the Valley and for you? Um, well, uh, Shelly was uh, phenomenal. She was just a, just a, a streak of um, amazement, what she was. just. A, a big ray of sunshine brought good upon everything into everybody that she came in contact with. Um, probably every single one of her co-workers currently and past would say the same thing. Um, and my wife, Shelly, she had, she had no enemies. I can tell you that right now. She had no enemies. And that is uh, very tough to say about anybody. You mentioned her co-workers. Um, you mentioned she was the hotel director for the cannery. Yes. Hotel and Casino on Craig Road. Yes. Uh, owned by Boyd Gaming. Yes. They did send us a statement. They said, we are deeply saddened by the tragic and senseless loss of our team member, Shelly. She was well known and well liked by the entire cannery team, and we will miss her. Our thoughts and prayers are with her family and friends during this very difficult time. Hearing that statement, what does that mean to you? Well, to be honest with you, um, I, I already knew that because I already knew how they, because I, I've, I've been in contact with that particular company and I've known many employees at that company for quite a long time. And so I already know how they feel about her. So that right there definitely does not surprise me one bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, okay, that's par for the course. It's what it is. It's basically par for the course right there. Any plans right now about Memorial? Or how you may want to remember her? Well, that, that's currently being worked on right now. Um, I, have, I have family and friends assisting me with that right now and getting all that arranged, certain people doing um, certain duties on that right now. So um, I could not give you a definitive right at this moment. Right. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it, Lonnie. You got it.